Great. Thanks for thanks for everyone joining today. So we're going to discuss um, nine factors that impact your uh, PCB designs from material selection, a little bit about stack up design, and then shielding and thermal management. But before, before that, uh, if you haven't reached out to Sierra for a quote, I encourage you to do so. We're an ITAR NIST certified PCB manufacturer and assembly facility in located in Silicon Valley. So we do all sorts of technologies there. And uh, please reach out to us. You can go to our website, start a quote there. Um, we'd love to uh, work with you. Neil, do you want to talk about this slide? Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so I'm Neil Jarvis. I'm an application engineer with Rodin Schwartz. I've been in the RF and microwave industry for about 25 years. Um, so we really have three categories of products. Um, test and measurement, which is kind of the area that I work in. Um, we make uh, products for testing uh, wireless products, cell phones, wireless LAN, Bluetooth, that kind of thing. Um, ICR, so components for signal integrity, um, components that go into wireless devices, things like that, um, backplane testing, things like that, and then uh, aerospace and defense, so things for testing satellite communication, satellite links, things like that, um, and then automotive. So we have some interesting products for testing radars, radar performance, automotive radar echo generators. Um, then we have a technology systems group. So where we basically take these boxes and put them together, put software around it, put some infrastructure so you can see some of the systems down below where we're, um, we're taking stuff, putting together and, and using our technology expertise to, to solve a, a larger problem, could be aerospace defense. We do a lot of uh, signal and Integrity and EMC EMI, we're kind of the leader in the EMI uh, area. And then we have network and cybersecurity products. Um, so looking at endpoint security, secure network communications, et cetera. And one other area that's not mentioned in here is we actually make stuff for um, quantum computing. That's an area I've kind of gotten involved in more recently. So we have products for testing quantum computing. So if anybody's into that or interested in that, you know, ping me afterwards. Um, and that's all I got. All right, thank you very much. So let's uh, dive right in. So first uh, we'll discuss the parameters to consider when choosing materials for your RF PCBs. Uh, and again, uh, I encourage lots of questions. Um, you know, we have engineers and people standing by to answer them. And uh, if not, uh, we'll be getting back to you with the answers. So please, uh, you know, make this engaging uh, and, and ask a bunch of questions. Uh, so, yeah, so first, uh, you know, the, the dielectric constant, I think is a very key place to start. Uh, so the dielectric constant material will directly affect how quickly a signal travels through a PCB. So as the value increases, uh, the signal propagation speed will decrease. And then with the higher decay, um, there's more, um, you're more prone to inductive and capacitance coupling. And uh, a couple other points, the trace impedance is inversely proportional to the dielectric constant. And, uh, you know, we recommend using materials like I-speed or tachyon, um, you know, with, with a lower decay. Next would be the dissipation factor or loss tangent, which measures how much signal loss occurs in a dielectric material. And a higher DF means basically more signal loss. And this results in increased attenuation and greater insertion loss. So for an optimal uh, performance of your R cord, again, material selection is really important. Um, you know, like a, a Rogers 4350, an Itera, a Megtron. Um, if you go with the PTFE materials, uh, you know, which a lot of you mentioned, 
there are definitely manufacturing challenges with that. First, solder mask is very hard to get to stick to that. Um, and also even the plating within the via. Uh, so, um, you know, there's a, a, an outside process to roughen up the material in order to process. So that just, just be aware of it, it takes longer and costs more because of that, uh, you know, very kind of hazardous uh, process to roughen up the surface of the materials. Um, then the other uh, important um, aspect of the material is copper roughness. And so the main thing that material vendors have offered is low profile coppers. Um, you know, so there's also um, oils that uh, go through reverse treatment. Uh, and then, you know, you, that's, that's up to you. You can talk to us uh, to understand what material type, what copper types does that material vendor offer? Um, and we'll be happy to suggest uh, what we what we feel is 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 a good um, is a good solution. Um, you also have to worry about um, you know peel strength of copper. Uh, so if you use some of these uh, materials, you have to understand the peel strength might decrease. And so again, we can run some tests and and give you some input on that. So next is the CTE uh, and thermal conductivity of the material. So you want to always uh, select a material that has a CTE that uh, closely matches the rest of the board because as things expand and contract, it's the, uh, you know, and they go through the th repetitive thermal cycling. This is where uh, different CTEs will cause the mechanical stresses and that that will definitely cause an impact in the field. And even prior to field, if you go through um, some testings on the bare PCB, um, you can see, see failures there. Uh, so next on thermal conductivity, uh, a high thermal conductivity material is essential to prevent components uh, from overheating. So for effective heat dissipation, uh, you know, consider thermal conductivity uh, greater than 0.5 watts per meter Kelvin. And here are some example uh, materials that we work with regularly uh, that can meet that objective. So another um, important aspect of RF circuit boards is designing a reliable uh, stack up. So we're gonna dive into that. So, you know, let's explore why a hybrid stack up is, you know, could be pot potentially beneficial for your RF circuit. So a hybrid stack up will ensure, um, you know, your controlled impedance requirements and a solid return path um, for your RF signals. And it also allows to incorporate low dielectric constant materials, uh, you know, only for your RF layers. And that basically will, uh, you know, save you cost and, and hopefully ease the manufacturing side of it. And so uh, if you can build up your, your hybrid stack up with these different types of materials, you're kind of getting the best of both worlds. And if you want to build up your sensitive RF circuits um, and isolate them from the rest of the board, you can you know, mix and match the materials uh, that way. And so what we've seen in hybrid stack ups is basically two material types. You know, maybe a 370HR or a Ventec or something like that. And then on the outer layers uh, where the RF features are, that's where you have your, you know, low DK materials. Sometimes, uh, depending upon the material type, it makes it a little bit more difficult to manage the manufacturing um, recipes like drilling and plasma uh, and scaling. But more or less, once we run a design or a hybrid stack up once, we'll get the scaling information. Um, so just be aware of that, that sometimes a board fabricator might need to run a first article to dial in those types of things. 
So here's some key strategies to ensure high performance. Um, uh, your high performance stack up. So next, uh, designing the traces to ensure signal integrity. So here are some essential design techniques to enhance your signal integrity in RF circuits. Um, first and foremost, you wanna minimize the length of the RF traces. Uh, second, avoid running your RF traces in parallel uh, to other signal traces, just to avoid any unwanted coupling. And then here is uh, an example of a daisy chain instead of multi-point branches, uh, and, and so on and so forth. 